Clue Network. To edify, to encourage, to upskill. This is Christian Life Upskill with Ifai of Hong Subscribe now. So I need to stop. And he stopped. But this change did not come until Joseph Prince started praying. So I don't know what you're going through in your life. You must begin to know that until you start giving yourself to prayer, devotion to prayer, it will not change. Glory to God. We saw the story of Jabez. The Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. And Jabez went to God and prayed, Oh God, that thou mayest bless me indeed. First prayer. And enlarge my coast. The second, he says, and let your hand be upon me. Glory to God. And Bible says, and save me from trouble. And Bible says, and God granted him that which he requested. But he life, his life did not change until he started praying. So, don't live your life in a default, brothers and sisters. Let's be devoted to prayer. Glory to God. So, this is so, so, so very important in our, in our journey. You know, some of us have so many prophecies hanging over our lives. Let's read the book of First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one, verse eighteen. I want, I want to see something. First Timothy one eighteen. Okay, I read. Have you seen it? First Timothy one eighteen. It says, "This charge I give unto thee, son Timothy." According to the prophecy which went before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. He says, This charge I give unto you, Timothy, according to the prophecies that have gone before you, that you with them will begin to make war. So, prophecy can come over your life and not be fulfilled. Somebody can see your dream. Hey, I see you, I see you traveling to America. And you may never travel to America in your life. Somebody can say, hey, I see you, I see you, your wedding gown. And you may never see that wedding gown. Hey, I see you, you are the next governor. You may never become a governor. Because it's just prophecy. And prophecy can fail. There are different things you need to understand about prophecy. There is prophecy that doesn't fail. Like the coming of Jesus. That one will happen. You know? But there are conditional prophecies where you have a part to play. There are other ones that, whether you believe it or not, it will happen. But the other ones that, if you don't pray, God told, in Genesis chapter 15, God told Abraham, your, your grandchildren, your descendants will be in captivity for 400 years, and after which I will bring them out. God told Abraham, years, years later, he said 400 years, it was 430 that the children of Israel started crying to God for help. And that was when God sent Moses to them. But 400 years passed. Nothing happened. So if you think what will be, will be. You are going to wait for a long time. I remember, God is not in a hurry. 1,000 years before in our present, before God is like a day. So imagine that you are waiting for God. You are waiting for God's time. Don't wait for God's time. Push. Prophecies has been given over your life. Prophecies of protection, of preservation, of prosperity, of health. You push for it. He says, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies that have gone before you, that you with those prophecies begin to war good warfare. What is warfare? Prayer. Glory to God. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to press into the deep. Very vital. Otherwise, we still have another failed prophecy. And he said, that, that pastor, you know they see well. Now you know they do well. The pastor see him. Now you know do anything. Uh, all these pastors, then they see. If they see, now you know they do anything. Because they gave you prophecy, and then you went to relax. You must push for it. Glory to God. Very, very vital. So in, in our journey with God, we must understand the place of, you know, pressing for prophecy. Hallelujah. Pressing. Glory to God. Very, very, very important. We saw something else in the book of you know, in the book of Acts chapter 2, chapter 12, let's read it. Acts chapter 12. It's a very beautiful story. While I begin to round up. Acts chapter 12. Acts 
Acts chapter 12, I read from 1. He said, Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to verse certain of the, of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he went further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Hallelujah. I will follow the story. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, five. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And six says, And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers, the, the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter beside his side, and asked him to stand up, blah, 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 blah. We, saw, we know the story. The Bible says Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season. Now, James had been killed. Peter was the next. So, what would have happened if the church had stood up to pray for James? James would not have been killed. That is what he should. So, so, if they have waited for another two days, Peter also would be gone. Then they, they, they move to Bartholomew. Then another person will be gone. Then before you know it, they slaughter all the believers. Why? Because they were, they were not pushing in the place of prayer. So we must understand this. If you don't do things about your life, there are things that only prayer can change. There are things that only prayer can change in your life. Bible says prayer was made without season. The word therefore, um, um, without season, is the word ectenis, which means to stretch. So they had prayer groups. This one prays today. This was praying in the night. This was praying in the day. And they kept praying for Peter. Hallelujah. And even when God released Peter, they didn't know. Um, the the doctor says, she, Peter is at the door. They didn't even believe until they now showed himself. Because they were pressing. Glory to God. So, two, you must always know, for you to be devoted to prayer, you must know first that there are some things that will never change in your life if you don't pray. Very, very important. Glory to God. And then the third thing that will make me devoted to prayer is that I must hang around people that pray. Glory to God. I must hang around people that pray. I must hang around people. I must read books of people that praise. I must hang around those that praise. If you, if you, are, in a, if you are always listening to a man of God that don't pray, you might likely begin to receive that thing from him. Or people that talk down on prayer. You know, Everything revolves around prayer. When Jesus was teaching the book of Matthew, chapter 6, there were three important things he taught. When you pray, when you fast, when you give. You see these three things? So very vital, core for every Christian. You know, Peter was talking in the book of Acts, chapter 6, where there is so much confusion about food. Peter stood up and says, it is not good for us to leave the word of God and serve tables. He says, let's select people in church to take care of these things. He said, but we will give ourselves continuously to the ministry of the word and of prayer. So, if you are a Christian, you are not, you see, and the beauty of prayer, when I talk about prayer, it's not that you now pray for um, five hours every day. It's not what I'm saying. I am saying, half time where you pray. Half time when you pray. And be consistent at it. You know, I was reading a book, The Story of Spiritual Sword. He, had read eight, he has read eight people from the dead. I think he was one of the highest on record. And I was so thrilled by his story. So I bought his salmon book. He has a very big salmon book. So I was just reading around, just reading his books, just to find some, see some things in his stories. And I noticed something. Smitugu Swat, you would never hear him say things like, uh, I prayed for two hours, I prayed for four hours, even though that is very good. But I heard something he always says. That 30 minutes does not pass without him praying. And he can pray as small as 15 minutes. But every 30 minutes, every one hour, he will pray for 15 minutes. And he does it consistently. So the beauty of prayer is not that you, you do eight hours. No, you need to, you, there are things you still do. You have to go to work. You have to cook. 
if you're a married woman, you have to take care of your children. So you, I can't be talking about eight hours of prayer. But you can have time where you wake up and pray. You know, just take great time, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, you pray. And you make it consistent. Glory to God. And that is the beauty. So I was saying, surround yourself with people that praise. This year should not be that last year where we become casual about prophecy. You must begin to make up your mind this year. One of the things I've made up my mind to do this year is to press into God till I know the voice of God clearer. Me, if I'm in Chukwu, that is what I want to achieve this year. Where I know the voice of God clear. It's not um, FM, sharp. You know, because a lot of things are happening and I fear will be... Two weeks ago, we saw what happened in Duse. Somebody came to somebody's house. In his house, it's not like he traveled and they pick father and mother, carry children. Then they move. So imagine that they know that danger was coming. They will quickly leave. A friend was telling me, they picked him from um, a poor resettlement and went to one hill. That was where they released him. After they have beaten them up and collected their money. You know, so there is, if, if you don't know the voice of God, there is so much danger that you just walk into. Walk into your death like that. So it's so vital. And I want this money to plant a seed in your heart. You must make Christianity is not that you go to church. Uh, no, 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 no. It's that you press into God. Hallelujah. You have, you have a goal. My goal this year is to know the word of God. My goal this year is to know God. My goal this year is to achieve this in God. It's, to, it's not that you go to church, you dance, you, you sing. There is nothing wrong with singing. There is nothing wrong with worship and all that. But they are not tools for growth. That is the truth. The tool for growth is the word of God and prayer. So, if you are not praying, you will never grow as a Christian. If you don't give yourself to the Bible, you don't read books, you don't read Bible, you will never grow. You Okay, I've been a Christian now for 30 years. But you don't know anything. You, don't, you have not grasped anything. So, there's a tool. You know, we have a lot of young people. They go to church and they are so vibrant. They say, hey, today worship was great. Hey, we dance. What did, what did the pastor preach? They can't remember. They cannot remember. And he went to church. But they dance. They do this one. So, at the end of the day, they are not growing. There's a tool for, for growth as a believer. And one of them is prayer. So, this year, and it's not just that you are praying. It's a prayer with focus. Prayer with what you want to achieve. What do I want to achieve this year? This year, I want my finances to grow. This year, I've set myself a target. I want to be able to marry. Whatever is blocking me. This year, I want a new job. The, and you focus your attention at it. And you press, look for relevant scriptures to support what you want. And then, see, it's not difficult. Some of us think that God hears pastors better than us. It's not true. All of us have the same audience with God. And you can achieve anything you want to achieve when you put your mind in it. Hallelujah. So you must make up your mind to live that lifestyle. Glory to God. So I'll talk about three keys so important for us to know in being devoted to prayer. And the first is that you must be mindful of the reward of prayer. And in talking about the reward of prayer, I'm talking about the place of knowing the voice of God, visions, revelations, and then the place of protection. And I also talked about the place, you know, the first is the reward. And the second is that there are things that will never change except you pray. And the third is surrounding ourselves with people, friends that praise. Hallelujah. When I was in school, I used to have, we used to have friends that praise, all of us. Most of them are pastors now. Every day, we have time where we just, two hours, we just pray. You know, and sometimes we even go and evangelize. And this was 2005. And this was one of those times where I saw the power of God manifest. We went to preach to a young girl. She was spilling cassava. So while we were preaching to her, you know, I don't know if I shared this story here before. While we were preaching to her, after preaching, she said, all these people are saying, I believe you, but my sister is inside her place. She's dying. She has been sick for six months. I said, let's go. When I entered the room, very dark room, she was covering herself with a thick duvet. We, we opened the duvet. There was so much pus. I don't know if it's HIV or I don't know. So much pus on our body. You know, everyone was just smelling. So I sat, beside, I sat behind. My friend was talking to, to her. So while we were talking, we were just talking, they're trying to encourage her. Something like 
like gift of faith, wall up on my inside. So I told my friend, please wait, let me talk to this girl. So I, I, I said, look at me. I've never done it before. I said, make her try. I said, look at me. Look at me. I said, I'm going to start reading the book of Isaiah 53 to you now. And when I do, you're going to start sweating. And that means you are healed. Are you hearing me? He said, yes. She was sick of me. I said, okay. So, so I opened the book of Isaiah and I was just teaching on Isaiah, you know, what Christ has done for us. This was 2005. I'll never forget it. You know? So when I was talking, to my amazement, she pulled the duvet. Ah! So when she pulled it, I'm like, what, what is happening? He said, no, say, I'm feeling heat. Before it, I'm feeling cold. Now I'm feeling heat. I said, really? I said, yes. So, that was not enough. She now sat down and faced me. We got talking. I said, wow. So this thing works. She, so I took her up. I took her around the room. I blessed water we have. I gave to her. She drank. You know, everything. We went, went to. But I didn't want to think about it. That it didn't work. So like, the guy that took us there, like two weeks later, and I called the guy. I said, bros, how far? That girl will pray for her far. He said, no, the girl came for Thanksgiving last Sunday in Anglican Church. I said, wow. Like, really? That they want to see you? I said, no, that's what I do. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but I didn't know the impact of that miracle until 2018 when I traveled to that same place in Umuleri with my friend. So my friend now introduced me to the mother. He said, do you remember that girl that got healed? She said, yes. He said, this was the guy that prayed for him. For her. He said, you? I said, yes. She not said, what do you do now? I said, I do business. He said, no. You can't be doing business. I said, what will I be doing? He said, no. He said, what you, the prayer you pray for this girl went around this village because she, everybody thought she was going to die. But it was just a simple faith in the word of God. And then coupled with the fact that as I'm talking now, I'm feeling the anointing. My left hand is burning. Coupled with the fact that you have been taking time to pray. So, you can develop energy in yourself also. This thing is not rocket science. So we tell every believer to pray. There's a reason. Because when you pray, you produce energy. Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The word there is the word is cow. What is is cow? Is cow means for something to be forceful. You know, like a caterpillar hits something. He says when you pray, it's like you hit something. Glory to God. And every believer can achieve that. So, this morning I want to encourage us on the subject of prayer. And that is, we must understand that we must be devoted to prayer. It's not just that you fasted for January and you, don't, you must be consistent at it. And you must grow your prayer life. Glory to God. In two, three minutes, let's just be on our feet and just pray in the Spirit. Ando faito shabaat. Mendekada di istun shfana fati. Lum van gagaba shifer uto si vayata. Papa te vrendons kavash. Emorande akatush kovanke ista sash. Arundo so vrendes sabrashta. Akatusu feke lezu shabayate. Jum vrengali brasta saf. Preke prefere shotaha. Lingru zeverakusha fregistus barsh. Ligrunde zavanasi vila kapar.